What's going on, SML? SML Countdown is back. Uh, first episode of the season. What's going on, guys? What's up, man? It's been a minute. It, it has definitely Long been a while. Missing. All right, so Good to be back. Yeah, I mean, we got the playoffs coming just around the corner. Uh, AJ, you'll get to watch those, and uh, everybody else. Straw, actually, Straw, you had a tough win, uh, or a, not a win, but a loss against DW. Uh, how are you feeling about your playoff chances? Yeah, I, man, I don't even know. I, I think after that loss, uh, I think I just opened the floodgates for everybody else. So I got to be <laughs> perfect. I mean, playoff starts right now for yeah. me now. So I got to win every game. Yeah, that you and Monty game in uh, week 18 just got really big. So uh, yeah. maybe, maybe me and AJ will commentate that if he, if he's up. For ah, it. You know, it's going to make for great TV. If anything else, I think I'm providing some great TV. Oh, yeah. A, a Monty game is always great TV. Uh, they'll do something. Yeah, that'll be an offensive uh fireworks in that one yeah sure. i mean it doesn't even have to be mad and anything monty's involved in is going to be good tv war zone he took yeah, a, Eckler always has a huge run against me so just just expect that you know yeah i mean this should be that. eckler's last uh last season i'd hope i mean he's got to be getting old so maybe you can hey. finally get rid of him uh, <laughs> but but that wasn't even any of our talking points so uh first topic tonight aj we'll start with you there's been a a lot of turnover to start this season, and this topic may have been a little better uh, positioned at the beginning of the season, but we've kind of seen these primer guys. you got Filthy, Scoob, and Torque. Um, which one do you think is going to make the most noise going forward? We'll start with you, AJ. So I think the obvious and popular answer would probably be Filthy, um, but he's also playing with the Broncos. Yeah. So I think when Scoob figures it out and he gets a – full season under his belt here. Uh, I think with the Chiefs uh, and Patrick Mahomes and the weapons they got, I think I think he's in a good position to make some noise if he can just get to the playoffs and stop, you know, throwing 30 interceptions. Um, it, he'll get there. A lot of these guys, I think you're going to see kind of, it's going to click mid-cycle, and that's about where we are right now. So Yeah, and, and just for reference, Scoob is coming from, uh, he had the Colts. So he's going from the Colts to the Chiefs. You've got Torque is going from the Bills to the Texans. Hell of a drop off there. And then uh, actually Filthy is going from the Chiefs to the Broncos. So not a not an upgrade there either. Really, Scoob's the only one kind of upgraded his team. Uh, Straw, what about you? Which one do you think is, is kind of going to be the most noise going forward? Yeah, interestingly enough, I was checking these guys out and what they did this season. And um, I'm going to say this. They all just got bullied by QP. QP's yes. a bully. He, he actually took them out back to back to back in three weeks. Um, and so when I looked at that, I said, wow, okay, well, who lost to QP? Not as bad as the others. <laughs> and, uh, and Filthy was the one who stood out from there, only, um, only losing by a 25-point deficit, while the other ones lost by much, much more. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm giving it to Filthy for that. Um, and I also just think, uh, you know, that, that Broncos team, I, I, I also have them in another league. And I think that they, uh, I think they actually turn out re really well. You know, I, I kind of mm -hmm. like the development, some of the players on that team. And, uh, I think the way filthy plays, I think he's gonna, he's gonna turn that team around and he's already, he's already doing, you know, best record with, uh, out of the three so far. So I'm going to give it to filthy. Okay. Yeah. See, I think, I think QP is going to spank filthy and, uh, and scoob pretty much the rest of the cycle twice a year. Um, so I think it's actually going to be Torque because I think he's already beat Prime once and that's really the only competition in his division. And I think if he can even just maybe split with him every season, I think I think that'll be uh, more noise than the other two are going to make. All right. He'll, get, he'll, he'll only get better, too. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get better. That team should get better because um, they're god awful right now. Uh, so topic two, um, and it, it's kind of... Uh, Kind of revolves around dev games, breakouts, uh, force feeding guys to get stat bumps. What do you guys think about that? There's kind of a, it's kind of looked down upon to to force feed your guys and, and kind of spam them. What do you think about that, Straw? Yeah, I'm I'm never into to like straight up force feeding. Like all you're looking for every play is is this player. You know, just because you're trying to get that dev bump. I, I don't think that's a a really good fun or you know way to win. It, quite frankly. 
Um, I think that, you know, you even look at the NFL and, you know, in Madden, you got good players and you try to design plays and set up different things to get that player open, whether it's running the ball a certain way in the beginning to set up a play action or, um, you know, putting them in a position maybe against a good matchup, like things like that, I think are cool um, to find interesting ways to get the guy open um, because then you're using the rest of the team to help that player also get open, maybe score those sort of sorts of things. But I think just kind of spamming it to them is is like eh, you know it, it also just makes the game not as fun yeah um you know so all right aj what do you think yeah i'm um i've never ever really tried force feeding and in, in the fact that I, I know that it would go very poorly for me yeah. uh in the game so uh usually i enter a dev game like okay first and foremost i want to win the game you know if i'm in a position to make the de- get the dev in the third or fourth quarter we're gonna go for it but we're not gonna you know, no holds barred, just go all out for the dev and then lose the game. Um, personally, if I don't play my style of game, I'm, I'm, I don't stand a chance. So um, that's kind of the way I approach it. And I'm not good enough to, to force feed a guy the whole season. Like I've, we've seen some of this, especially yeah. with some of the rookie QBs. Guys throwing 45 picks, but hey, they threw for 5,000 right. yards. So so this is this is a little, little off topic. Um... But, but kind of along the same lines. I know, I think it's Dan has like a, a terrible record in dev games. Like if he has a dev game, he pretty much loses and sells out to get that dev. Um, what are you guys' records you think, off just off the top of your head, what do you think your record is in dev games? Do you notice that you lose more of them than you win? I, you know, in my opinion, depending on the, the dev, like if it's an X-Factor dev, I feel like the opponent's team is like lights out. I don't know what it is. But like, if you have an X Factor dev, you better get ready for a freaking fight because the game's gonna make it hard on you. Um, you know, some of the other some of the other ones, I feel like I don't know. It's not even notice, noticeable if you have like a normal to star. Like, you know, if you get it great, if you don't, not really that big a deal. But I, I I truly believe that that the AI is coded to like ball out if you have an X Factor dev. So. That must be why I have such a good uh good record right now because I can't get a dev game to save my life. <laughs> How about you? For Scott? me, I yeah, for me, I'd say if it's an offensive dev game, I I usually win, and um the the reason is because like even let's say it's third or fourth quarter and that guy's close, but uh um but he's not quite there yet. If he's not open, I'm just not gonna give it to him, and I'm just like, dang, you know, I'm, I might have missed that. Like I'm gonna try to I'm yeah. gonna try to play to win. I'm gonna throw to who's open. And, you know, sometimes I look after the game and I'm like, how many yards did he have? Like, did I get it? I don't know. Um, so so on offense, I usually win. On defense, man, it is another story. It's like my defensive players forget how to play. Like, yep. they really forget how to play. It's like, get one interception. I'm like, this dude is running away from the receiver. So I don't know how I'm ever going to get that interception. So when I'm on defense, I feel like I always lose. Yeah, I'll say the defensive ones kill me the most because it'll be like, get a, get a sack and tackle for loss, but it's my safety. So I'm I'm trying to yeah. find ways to get him in the backfield and and next thing I know, you know, everybody's thrown over the top and I'm done and yeah, I, I could see losing those defensive ones cuz I play completely different if if that's the case. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right, so last topic, we just saw a guy in Woods not even usually a favorite to make the playoffs. I mean, he's he's usually right at kind of the cusp of the playoffs. Um this season it looks like he's even out of the playoffs. Um but he won the Super Bowl. If it were to happen again with a guy that's kind of not not necessarily a uh, a perennial playoff team, who do you think would be the Super Bowl winner? I would so say. From, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, all right, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Um, so for me, I would say uh, I'd have to go, and and this is easy. This is probably like a, a easy take because he's in my division. But I'd have to go with Biz. Um, I look at Woods' team, uh, you know, I, I think we have a really, really tough division, um, and we always have a lot of tough games, and it, 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 it's tough for, for us to, to um, get a good spot. But for Biz in particular, I think he has, like, a team that's kind of built similarly to um, what Woods had, even though I don't think any team can compare to the that defense oh, yeah. that Woods had. But if I was going to compare a team, I think the 49ers is really close. And in the in Biz's style of play, like when he gets that run game going, if he can get Christian McCaffrey really, really going, I mean, he's hard to stop. And then uh, if he can get if that 
if he gets that going, the defense can kind of force you to make mistakes, and yeah. and and he knows how to win uh, when he gets to that point. And so I could see, like, when I was thinking about this, I'm like, getting to the Super Bowl, like, that's tough. You got, you also got to have the team that can be able to do it. Uh, it, it, it so I think I think Biz uh, could be that guy who, you know, we're like, oh, you know, he made it to the playoffs, and is he going to get put out? But it, next thing you know, his team is, is taking over along with some of his play. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, uh, AJ? Who's your guy? It's a hard one, but um, I kind of along the same lines of straw. I, I was trying to look for a guy that had a good team because um, I think that that's going to make a difference for a guy that maybe is not, not always in the playoffs. Um, and maybe this is just, you know, recency bias, but I, I'm going to go with Mike because we've seen Mike just about be able to beat anybody when he's, when he's not turning the ball over. Um, and he's got that Ravens team that's, that's built to win now. Um, he's topped in at defending the run, which is, you know, monumental for this Madden, in my opinion. Um, so if he figures out off, off offense without turning the ball over a lot, I mean, he's a guy that's going to be tough to beat. I think he's, he's beat Dan this season. I think he's beat Dan a couple times this cycle. I mean, Dan was in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, if a guy like that can just make the playoffs – I mean, you never know what can happen. I think Dan hinted early, earlier today. It, 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 whoever makes a playoff has a chance at the Super Bowl. And this man, I think that's just as true as ever because the experience from game to game can be totally different. So. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And I think it is, like you guys said, it's going to be somebody that has a really good team, and, and that way it can kind of mask some of the flaws maybe they have in their game. But talking about Biz, he, his style just doesn't give you an opportunity to take the ball away. If you let him get in his his kind of uh, his play calling and and don't make him uncomfortable, you're not getting that ball. So it's yeah. it's tough. All right, so let's go to our top plays. Uh, and this week's top plays, AJ, we'll start with your top play. If you want to go ahead and uh, let us know which one you picked. So we got QP's ridiculous one-handed interception with the rookie Hardison. Um, you know, I don't know how you get a guy to animate like that. You know, much I've seen linebackers can't even lift their heads over their head, and we got a freaking safety that's reaching up and grabbing the ball with one arm. You know, Odell Beckham catch, ridiculous play. I hadn't seen the animation like that all cycle. So this is this was my play of the game. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen one from a receiver like that's 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 <laughs> an impressive animation. Straw, how about you? Yeah, for me, man, I, these runs are just crazy. And maybe it's just that I'm jealous. I I, I want to uh, I want to run it back. I can move like this. But man, watching Saquon just get past people, break a tackle, and like get right back into his acceleration, man. I think that's awesome. Like, ah, man. And so this this is crazy. He he pushes the defender to the side, and then still like no one can catch him. Crazy. Uh, so I had to give it to Saquon. All right, I went. I went with the uh, low-hanging fruit here. This was the easy one. It was Finns against Doink. Last second, I mean, he's down four here. You can see the time has already run out. There's This is it. He throws it to HN, who then pitches it out of, like, six defenders' hands, and he immediately gets uh, Sutton in for the score. Game over. Finns beats Doink. Um, and any time an NFC playoff team can lose, I, I don't mind that. But, I mean, Doink is especially – He's been doing this for the last two cycles, trying to get one of these. And then the first one I see ends up happening against him. Uh, so it's, <laughs> that's kind of funny and, and, and kind of like a little bit of poetic justice there. But um, that was definitely my easy, easy call for play of the week or play of the, I guess, the season at this point. Uh, that, that might be play of the cycle. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, when I, saw that, yeah. I was like, are you serious? That's a tough one to uh, top. The only one I think I've ever that. seen my entire SML career. Now, Prime lost the Super Bowl on a uh, tipped catch that the guy ended up. He threw it like, I think it was like 30 yards short of the end zone, a Hail Mary at the end. Gets tipped, goes to McLaurin, and he takes off and scores the touchdown to win it. Um, and then that was before my time, though. The one I remember was last cycle, Demus uh, picks up a squib kick at the end of the game. He's playing QP. Picks up a squib kick, runs to one side, and then pitches it to the other and scores a touchdown to knock QP out of the playoffs. About like oh. this one, and it was it was rough. Uh, and that was a tough one for QP. Anyway, he couldn't see the score, the t the clock, anything. It was one of those EA glitches. But uh. the Finns play that. That's my top play. And that's gonna bring us to the last straw. And straw, you've got a little bit of a uh, video montage here, so I'll go ahead and start it and take it away. 
Yeah, so uh, of course, you know, I had to go with QP. I said earlier he bullied the three uh, primer guys that just came up. And so I just had to show uh, the game against the Chiefs. I was watching it, 52 points put up. And actually, I think he just put up 62 against, uh, against the Texans today. Um, and so if I had time, I would have grabbed that one. But just watching him do what he does, uh, you know, QP, quality passing, quick pick, the quiet precision. What do we want to call him? Because this guy, his passing is crazy. He has a 72% completion uh, percentage, over 4,500 yards and 50 passing touchdowns uh, on the season. The next closest guy in passing touchdowns is 39. Um, and so you guys see here, he absolutely ate the Chiefs up with his user. Um, you hear about how crazy his user is, and you hear about how crazy the, uh, the passing is. And so uh, this game and watching the precision on, on each of these plays is just, is just insane. Um, and he does it out of, out of the shotgun. He does it uh, under center. Um, and, you know, don't, don't forget about uh, him being able to use the running back because then he'll also get shifty with you with that rookie running back like he does here to get it into the end zone. 52-17, and he's been doing it all season. Everybody has been raving about QP, and you know what? It's the last straw. Somebody's got to take him out, uh, and we'll see if it can happen in the playoffs, uh, just like what you alluded to, uh, Bobber. So I had to put QP up there because he's just been having a crazy season this season. All right, yeah. It, it, the last run there uh, against, against who was it he just played? Torque. That was <laughs> the 62 points he hangs on uh, on Torque, and, and that kind of finishes off those uh, – new primer posse and uh he's, he's looking really good i think he's probably the favorite in the afc right now yeah i'd have to agree all right well that's gonna do it for this week's episode of sml countdown um hopefully we'll get another one in maybe uh right after christmas or something i'd, I'd assume we're probably not getting another one in before the uh the holiday but we'll see um, but thanks for being on, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to vote for your favorite, uh, your favorite top play. Obviously, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be Finns, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, it, I, it's it's uh, Finns. No, it's Finns. Really so. Yeah, I mean, there were three good ones, but I think that that one stands out above everybody else's. But we'll see what the uh, what the SML votes on. But thanks for watching, guys.